The date is April 3rd, 1997, and in the city of Seattle, Washington, at around 11 a.m., 911 operators would receive a call that would change the course of history. Hello, 911, what's your emergency? There's a... Uh, black man! He's carrying something that looks like a samurai oh, sword! okay, calm down. Please don't racial profile. He... Does he appear to be dangerous? He's just standing there, but everyone's what is your... freaking out! What is your current location? Second and Pike! Okay, I want you to stay on the line. I'm going to alert law enforcement of the situation. Just send Just help stay now, please. calm for me, okay? Yes, very calm. This call triggered an 11-hour standoff, which would forever immortalize the name of the Seattle Street Samurai. Shakes off the tear gas with almost superhuman strength. The man refuses to surrender his weapon without a fight. There's talks about this guy online, but they're from forever ago. So I just thought I'd make a contribution by putting this amazing story in a digestible video format. I was genuinely floored to see that nobody had made a video about this. Because this is insane. With nothing but sunglasses and a samurai sword to his name, this man held off an army of police officers for 11 hours. He withstood everything from getting sh** to receiving a bribe in the form of a Big Mac. Who the f and just stood there. His name is Tony Allison. But on this day, he insisted that everybody, including the police, refer to him as Apollo. And it all started with him doing nothing. Yeah, it didn't actually start with that 911 call. That was fake. Uh, surprise. It was actually an off-duty police officer, and he was alerted about a man in camo pants and a leather jacket. That was quote-unquote disturbing. So this off-duty police officer decides to follow him from Pike's Place Market to the corner of 2nd and Pike. Which, uh, bro, you're off-duty. Try hard much? Anyways, this is where you see him in the video. Now, Apollo was suspicious of this guy following him, and rightfully so, I would be as well. So he took what the cop describes as a defensive stance with his sword at the ready, which is understandable in a defense situation like this but one. But sadly, that was enough for the off-duty cop to call his buddies. And they would remain in that same location for the next 11 hours. They closed all the stores, evacuated everybody, shut down all the streets, caused traffic jams. In case you guys are wondering whether he's actually dangerous with a sword the news report made sure to seek out a trustworthy source so the man confirms authorities worst fears yeah he knows how to use the sword when the cops got there apparently they tried to bribe the samurai sword out of his hand with a glorious sum of fifty dollars i want you to take one look at this guy and guess how he responded defensive stance no but actually verbally he didn't say anything for the entire 11 hour standoff except mentioning he had brothers in china and russia and correcting police officers when they wouldn't refer to him as apollo he also said that he was possessed by demons and wanted to kill them uh, he talked about uh, uh satan he talked about his brothers in russia and china but he never really engaged the uh, negotiator but yeah, he just refused to drop the sword. I don't know, I, I couldn't imagine why. However, the police did not give up here. Now they went back to the drawing board and came up with another offer. Now, I can't make this sh- uh, It's your McDonald's Big Mac, you've got a taste- They offered him a Big Mac. No, I'm serious, this is real. They offered him McDonald's. This is targeted. And they assumed since he was unmoved by this, he must have a mental health history. So they tried triggering schizophrenic urges. Of course, he was unmoved by these childish tricks and continued to stand his ground. So the police weren't sure what to do next. Next. Since he wasn't attacking anybody, but they had to get the sword out of his hand. They thought about throwing a net over him. They shot him with tranquilizer darts, which had no effect. They also shot him with those riot pellets, those little bean bags. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that scene in Jackass where they shot Johnny Knoxville with one of these things. It's considered less lethal. He was on the ground panting for like 20 minutes. Look, he just shrugs it off. Anyways, two unfair nut shots later, he was still standing. But he endures round after round and shows no sign of surrender. So then they decided the best route to take is to tear gas him. The man shakes off the tear gas with almost superhuman strength. Spray him with a fire hose. Hoping that he will lose his grip on the sword. When that doesn't work, they turn the water pressure up full blast. And then pin him down with a ladder. Those guys went down by the book exactly what they were supposed to do. Oh, pfft. yeah, of course. I'm pretty sure this is the definition of by the book, actually. Now, when you look at this from the outside, who is in the wrong here? Guns with special bean bags that strike with the same impact as a heavyweight boxer's punch. Chemical agents or tear gas makes the suspect very uncomfortable. It burns his eyes, it burns his skin, and it makes it difficult for him to breathe. 
The jets of water pack the force of a hurricane wind. Then, in a highly orchestrated maneuver, police pin the suspect down with a ladder, pole, and riot sheet. By the book, exactly what they were supposed to do. Yeah, I yeah I agree. I don't know. You, you guys don't want to know my opinion. What do you guys think? Would you consider this excessive force? Let me know in the comments. And you might think this man's had enough. But the tragedy of Tony Apollo Allison's story is not As done. it turns out, only a year prior to the sword incident, Tony Apollo Allison was released from Western State Hospital after finishing a 10-year sentence from a charge in which he pled not guilty due to insanity. A charge of second-degree assault with intent to run. Before this incident, he was an alcoholic, wandering the streets with a sword on his back, and now he's a man with his name engraved in history. He was later sent back to Western State Hospital. However, his current whereabouts are unknown. Until now. In a twist of events, I think I might have just found him. Or at least some potential evidence he's still out protecting the city. Back in 2021, a dad was with his son at Bitter Lake Playfield. And while passing by a homeless encampment, spotted this distinct shiny object sticking out of the debris. Now the location of this park happens to be about 50 miles away from Western State Hospital. Or a mere 8.2 miles away from where this whole thing began. Now, due to Apollo's story being very old and many news sources doing very minuscule amounts of deep diving and just very little information in general, I had to resort to these two blog posts excessively. This one's got a really neat website, so go check it out. It's got a lot of neat posts about like alien, CIA project, cover-up stuff. Go check it out. And don't forget to subscribe.